my friends, welcome back to a new video today. We have a wonderful topic to talk about. Those are not your friends. So this was a suggestion from someone if I could talk a little bit about why we don't have many friends or why we find ourselves being surrounded by people who are kind of not wanting for us to, to grow and to become better or to, you know, become who we want to be like we you know when you get yourself into a certain research like this is how I want to grow in my life or you decide okay this job is not for me I actually want to start up my own company and you start recognizing like your whole family circle is kind of against you why those things are happening why they can't just support me why they can't just see my my enthusiasm like I want to do something out of my life. If you feel like that, this video is for you. So firstly, friends and friendships and things like that, uh, you know, these connections that we have, the emotional connections. In dictionary, a word friend means uh, a connection we have with someone on an emotional level where we say, oh, I like this person. I'm aligned with this person. We may have similar interests and things like that. Like, this is the connection, the energy connection between me and that person. And I like it. So when we look around ourselves and we say, those are my friends, are they really your friends? Because your friend is someone you admire, you like, and you may find a sense of support, especially at times you need it. If you don't have people like that around you, then those people are not your friends, but rather your teachers. And when I say your teachers, I mean, well, we come together so each of us can become a better human and more vibrant being, right? Human being. And when we look at people around us and sometimes we may say well this is who I don't want to be isn't it already a sense of a sign that you're actually learning from those people how to be better how to be kinder how to be more loving how to be more supportive maybe when you will have your own family or you already have your own family so you can bring more support to your fellow humans, right? Brothers, sisters, right? For example, as I was growing up, I was always, I always had different ideas. Like when most people were into one thing, I found a completely unique sport nobody was doing and I started doing that. So I always found a a different unique way for myself. And because of that, I always felt I mean, I mean, most of the time I felt like nobody supports me because most people just didn't understood why I took a different path. But to me, it was just interesting. Like, why would I do same thing as most people are doing? I actually want to start something new. I want to try something new. I want to see what I can find there. And because of that, often I felt unsupported. I felt like nobody truly wants me to succeed at that. So often I found myself being alone in it until I've started actually loving being alone because I've noticed, okay, I can make my own rules here. I can work on my own rules, right? I became quite independent. But, in, but independence is quite dangerous sometimes because we, re we recognize we're not alone here on this planet, right? We recognize, okay, it's good to be independent because you learn to be resilient. You learn to be strong. You learn to be wise with your choices because you recognize nobody will save you. So you need to be wise with what you're doing because everything has consequences, right? But the dark side of it is that you recognize soon, somewhere in the future, you will also start to collaborating with someone else because you're not alone on this planet. And when it comes to collaboration, then it comes to adaptability at flexibility. And that's what you're not so good at if you are constantly taking a solar path, right? 
you also need to learn to be flexible like a tree if tree would not be flexible it would soon be broken by a stronger wind so we learn okay this is the next level of my evolution i need to learn to be flexible i need to learn to adapt to my environment not completely but to a certain degree like if there's one way and there's another way find the middle way right and adapting to the middle way means that you recognize what kind of people surrounds you and you will not be able to change them and you will also not be able to completely walk away from them because they still exist right but you will notice that there is a middle point there is a middle way where you go your own path but you still decide to reflect on those people why they are the way they are because only that way you can actually integrate what you've been avoiding because some of them may trigger within you parts of you that you don't want to feel and you don't want to see and that's why you're avoiding them I know that for myself, every time I come and visit my family, they awaken many of my old wounds. And therefore, often I may feel like I actually don't want to be around. But actually, I've noticed, well, if I come around when I have a capacity to deal with that, I'm okay with it. I will actually learn something with it. But I will never come there with an intention to change them or to force my ideas onto them because maybe they are just not willing to change or to grow or they're completely okay being where they are or they are not okay but they are still not willing to do anything with it and that is i think the middle way because we can't completely erase what's happening around us right but we can always develop an attitude that becomes okay with what's around us and when we develop this kind of attitude that we're just okay with what's around us what's what happens we stop resisting to what may arise and we allow emotions to arise and feelings to arise and when we allow it we acknowledge it and for that often we need solitude right to listen to feel to recognize oh, what this person awakens within me and deep reflection on these things will help us to understand our own coping mechanisms that may awaken as the byproduct of the world we are dealing with and as those coping mechanisms awaken we recognize oh my those people are actually not my enemies those people are just um, people who are also work in progress right they may not know any better so they may be projecting their own limiting beliefs onto us because they just don't know any better long time ago they've stopped learning new things they've stopped growing so they don't know any better if they would knew any better most probably they would be better right so we start to love them as they are because we can't change them but also we don't need to spend much time around them if their energy is decreasing our own energy our own well-being right but acceptance is this part that helps us to move forward and to find those kind of people that we call our people the ones that actually help us to ascend to a greater level of enthusiasm like when you start your own business it's good if you find someone who's already good at doing that, right? So we can see, oh, you actually inspire me. I find a deep sense of enthusiasm every time I spend my time with you, right? Those are the people who may encourage us to, to keep up with it. But we have to make sure that even here we shouldn't be 100% only into this kind of circus because maybe those people are successful at business but really miserable at relationships and their family is falling apart so if we find them like the only 
source of um, great friendship, we may find ourselves being in a state where our family starts falling apart. So we start to recognize, well, everyone is our teacher, but no one is the most important teacher, right? No one is the most and the best teacher. Everyone is a teacher teaching us to turn back into yourself and recognize what needs to be resolved. Recognize what you don't like about yourself so you can start loving those parts of yourself. Because I may say, well, I don't like about myself that when I see a sad person, it awakens sadness within me. But that sadness is coming from somewhere, right? Be most probably because somewhere in the past I was like that. I was lazy, I was sad, or something um, kind of made me feel sad. Somebody said something to me, and when I see a sad person, maybe I remember those moments. And when I, when I recognize, oh, that person actually uh, helped me to remember those moments, let's go into this uh, younger me and let's tell to myself that actually I am okay. Actually, the person that said something mean to me was hurt and hurt people hurt people. So let's have compassion towards myself, right? And that's how we develop this sense of self-love attitude, self-acceptance attitude that reminds us of the importance of relationships, importance of friendships, that sometimes it's not so black and white, like um, these are good people, these are the ones that I want to spend my time with, and those are bad people, these are the ones I will be avoiding, because you can't avoid them. You will notice similar characters will be appearing in different bodies, <laughs> right? You will walk around and you will see similar people that are to those you've been avoiding in your family circle. So you recognize, well, people in your family are not supporting you because they don't understand your goals and your dreams and your aspirations, but it still doesn't mean they don't want you to, to grow like that. Actually, their language of love is like, be safe. Make sure you will not hurt yourself. That's how they say to you, I actually love you, I care for you. But you would rather like to hear from them, hey, my friend, you got this, right? Brother, you, you got this, right? You would like to hear this kind of language of love, but they just use a different language. Sometimes they may say, oh, are, are, are you succeeding? And you may say, oh, not yet. I told you so right? Only because they want to keep you safe. That's their language of love, but it's not how you want to hear it. And once you recognize those things, you will notice they're just using a different language. They're just using a different language than you do, or than you would like to hear. And that's where you stop looking down on them. You stop saying, oh, those, they're weird, they're strange, they're, you know, they don't want me to succeed. Actually, they want you to succeed. They want you to see you thriving. They just don't know how to express that because they've never been there, right? If they would succeed, they would say, I want you to feel what I feel. <laughs> you know, every time when we succeed at something, we want to give this same energy to others. I want you to feel what I feel. That's how good it is. Because maybe it may inspire you to overcome your own fears. That's our nature. They're just using a different language, right? So, at the same time, you need to allow yourself to expand and meet new people. And sometimes intention is enough and then allow that everything happens organically. You know, like, for example, you say, oh, I have enough of this um, family circle. I need something new. I need to meet new people. I need to surround myself with more, maybe, successful people or whatever. And you don't know where to meet them, where to find them. Well, intention is often already enough because intention comes from an evolved state of consciousness. You've recognized I have enough of this, so I'm ready for something new. That's where you've started thinking about why you need to meet new people, 
before that you were not thinking like that. You thought, I actually want to be alone because you needed to be alone. You needed to be in solitude. Now you've ascended a little bit more and you've recognized, well, I have enough of solitude. Now I want to meet new people, people who are where I want to be. This is a sign of ascension. This is a sign that actually you're growing and evolving. Your consciousness is, is expanding and you're recognizing, okay, to build new friendships, I need to meet people whom will be on that level with whom I want to actually establish this emotional connection and say, I like these people because they are a reflection of who I am becoming. And for that, well, we need to know who we are becoming. We need to have these clear goals. This is what I'm working on. And then we need to just clearly know uh, what are the, the types of people that could actually support us emotionally and maybe intellectually at this point. And then we start to think where those people are. Like there are most definitely certain places those people are going and there are places those people are not going. Like most probably they're not drinking somewhere in the bars, right? Uh, and most probably they are somewhere where they feel um, more attracted to. So we start wondering where to, where to meet those people. Are those people in libraries? Are those people in certain workshops? Are those people in their own offices? Or where are they? They're going somewhere. So we start to think more like they are thinking, right? And that's how we get to the point where we start attracting these people into our lives. We start to think like they are th thinking. Where would I go if I would already be successful in this? What would I do? Would I go into a coffee shop reading a book? Or would I go somewhere partying and, you know, do whatever? So the point is that you start thinking more like a person that is already where you want to be. And that's where you start meeting people who are thinking the same way, right? Because we attract more to ourselves that is similar to our own energy, that is similar to us. And when we recognize this um, interesting connection between our own way of looking on life and what surrounds us, we may learn from this process that actually everything is already taken care of. Firstly, I needed to find out what I need. Then I've started looking where I actually can meet my needs. What do I need to do to meet my needs? And then we start working on it and eventually things start aligning. I've started meeting so many incredible people after I've started uh, painting and after I had my first exhibition and after I've started making these videos. After that, I've started meeting many, many uh, people who are really interesting. And it only happened because I've started moving things and I've, I've started doing certain changes in my life until I've changed completely. And when I've changed, I've noticed the circle of friends changed a lot. People who are around me, my circle, is a different circle than it was 10 years ago. And even the same people have changed and evolved. And it's just, you know, the process of life. So rather than judging some, oh, those are bad people, you know, they're not supporting me, look at them from a different level. They just don't know any better. They all usually want best for you. No, some don't. But who cares about that? Just go on, move on with your life. But most people actually want you to succeed. They just don't know how to express that. So they express it in their own ways. That usually it sounds something you didn't want to hear. And sometimes it actually sounds negative and they maybe haven't realized that they had no idea how to say it differently. So they said whatever they knew what to say. And it was painful for you. So just move on with your life. Wish them the best. Bless them. Wish health for them. And 
send them a prayer that maybe at some point they will feel inspired to expand their themselves, their vocabulary, their ability to express love. So maybe in the future you can build deeper relationships with them. <laughs> right. So my friends, this is it for today. I hope you found anything valuable. I'm sending you lots of love blessings and power and don't forget we're running a super unique sale in our Etsy store I draw my passion where there's 20 off for all of my art link is in the description so go there check it out until next time one love